Hey guys, Alan from Hack Gadgets here. I got this little doodad over here at the dollar store today, and I'm holding it really steady. He's shaking around like a madman here. I wanted to see what makes this thing tick and how they can get this thing down to the price of, I think it was a dollar or a dollar twenty-five. Um, so there must be some sort of mechanism in here that is extremely simple, but obviously effective. Let's uh, take it over to the bench and crack it open and see what magic is in this thing. Okay, here's a little guy dancing all by himself. Nothing's, uh, nothing other than the solar panel here is making him go. And I have, this is a light meter right beside him. And he's going on uh, just a little over a thousand lux. Okay, so I have a sheet of paper here. It's just uh, hovering over top of this, this little guy here and the light sensor. So we're sitting at around 120 lux which is pretty dark and or pretty dim and uh, he's not dancing. I'm just going to move the paper up slightly just to get that to increase and let's see when he starts dancing. So he's at 200, 250, oh he's just wiggling now, 300, a little more, let's get 400, there's 400, he's starting to go a bit better there's 500, 550. Now I'm not sure if there's a cap in there that's slightly charging. He seems to be getting a bit more energetic. Let me turn another light on here. It's about 600. It's getting better. I wouldn't say he's dancing yet though, properly. There's 7, 725. About 8.30. There's 9.30. There's a thousand. Okay, so something's wrong here. He should be bugging out by now. I think what's probably happening is he's probably, there's probably a really crappy pivot point on there and he's probably just not on it. Oh, there he goes. And you can hear he's, uh, I think he's pegging out some limits on there. Okay, so maybe there is a little cap in there that just took a while to charge up. But a thousand lux really looks like the sweet point for this guy to continue working. Let me just crank him down to uh, about 700. Well, there's 650 and he's still going strong. Maybe it just takes them a little while to overcome the barrier. Is he still pegging it out? There's 550. And he's still pegging it out. There's 400. Okay, so he's not reaching his endpoints anymore because I don't hear him ticking. So let me see if I just remove this and get it back up to 550. Okay, and he's still not... Oh, there he goes. He's clicking again. Okay, so I think about 550 is the minimum sweet point for maximum operation. Now that we've seen him work, let's take him apart. Okay, so as you can expect, the plastic quality is not great. The head and the body are actually fairly solid. This bottom piece is just pathetic though. This is really thin. I don't know if you can see it flexing here. It's, there's not much holding this thing together, but it looks like it will come apart quite easily. Let me grab a screwdriver. Okay, let's take a look here and see what we can figure out. So it looks like this is just press fit together, I'm hoping.
Okay, actually, there is some electronics in the bottom here. So what do we have here? So the little photo cell that was in there has popped out. So this is just mechanics and a magnet. So with this magnet going back and forth, that makes them dance. And wow, so this magnet was actually swinging pretty far to make him dance that much. And this magnet actually weighs a little bit of, uh, has a bit of mass to it here. Okay, and what do we have on the inside? So we have some very thin wires that go from, and there is a capacitor on here, So here's the solar cell, and look at that, it actually has, so the solar cell comes over, gets connected to this board, who makes this solar cell, it's a, uh, oops, V-I-M-U-N, V-M-U-N, and that comes over to this little tiny board, on the board, there's a blob of epoxy here, so obviously there is a chip on board there. And then, geez, I'm going to break this. And then from there, there's two very, very fine wires that run over to this quite nice coil. It's, uh, it's quite thick. It's about the thickness of a penny and not quite the diameter of a penny but so there is a there's a whole bunch of turns there and there's these two really thin leads that go from the circuit board over to that look at that so i guess what this is doing is it's it's attracting this magnet, letting it float, and then as it's coming back, it's attracting it again, and then de-energizing, de so it floats up and continuing, con continuing. And I guess it must use, well, either one of two things. Either it just keeps on pulsing this at a certain rate as soon as it has enough juice, or maybe it is smart enough to actually use some feedback on this to know where it is, where the pendulum is in the motion. It's really interesting. Since we're dealing with magnetics here, um, I've dug up this. It's made by Allegro. It's the, and the one I'm using is the UGN3503. So it's a linear Hall effect sensor. And so what this is going to do is allow us to uh, test some of these magnetic capabilities here and just exactly see what's going on. So this is just a standard. Uh, everyday sort of Hall effect sensor. And I've just printed out the the data sheet for this was quite large. I've just printed out three sheets here uh, just for uh, some information here. So this is a block diagram of what we're dealing with. It's a, a three pin device looks very similar to a transistor uh, like a TO95 package. It's a little square though. It doesn't have the rounded back as a standard TO95 does. Or sorry, TO92. Um, and you can see here it's a really nice device to operate with. It's uh, you know operating at 5 volts, no problem. That's uh, well within its range. And it does draw quite a bit of current though. It draws 9 milliamps when it's operating. And we can see here the sensitivity of the device. Um, so it has, let's see here, about 1.3 millivolts per capital G. I'm assuming that's Gauss. Correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong on that. And here are some typical applications for these devices here. So there's a typical notch sensor application. So it would just be uh, giving you a pulse whenever it sees this notch come around. This would be giving you pulses for every tooth it sees coming over. And this one here is more of a, a current monitoring. It's, it's uh, going to be de detecting the current that's actually flowing through that loop of wire there. And here's the actual device. 
and you can see the sweet spot is sort of marked which is right in the center of the package and we have the package on the bench here it's just taped down for now so here it is little tiny guy and let's see here first page shows us how to connect it up so we basically have five volts on here we have ground on here our output is coming out of here and you can see right over here this is exactly what we have connected so this is our outputs It's going right over to uh, channel one of the scope our ground is just uh, being fed from a power supply and it's just commoned up with the ground of the, the scope and here's our uh, positive coming in so let's do a little bit of testing and see what this does with the magnets that's built into the toy first of all so there's the magnet right here I'm just going to bring it over to this sensor and see what happens let's just take a look at the scope here okay I'm just AC coupled here uh, we are on 100 millivolts per division. Here is our baseline, and I'm just going to slowly bring this magnet towards the center of that device. Right there. And I'm going to let him do some oscillations across it. So there we can see he's happily dancing away. Well, I can see that anyway. Let's just speed this up a little bit. And so there's the little guy doing full oscillations. So we're getting about about 100 millivolts swing, a little little more than that in each direction. Actually, probably closer to 200 in each direction. Okay, so here we have the sensor taped directly on top of the coil. The photo cell is in full sun. Our circuit is still intact here. And we have nothing coming out of that sensor. So there is no pulses or anything out of that coil as we speak. So the sensor is now taped to the bottom. Uh, so it's just uh, separated by the little plastic base on this and it's directly under the coil and so since he's not sitting flat anymore because the wires are sort of uh, putting us on a pretty good angle you can actually see inside here now that the photo cell is not there now it's kind of dark in there let me get some light in there okay so you can see that there is a bit of an offset I was thinking for some reason it would be centered, that coil would, would be centered with the magnets, but it's not. It's offset quite a bit, and I'm thinking that's actually what uh, allows it to start. So what's happening here is occasionally, you'll see it, it uh, since it's offset, it doesn't want to naturally rock back and forth, so it probably has a much more resistance than it's it's used to and you can see it's trying to start so there it tried there tried again okay and now without anything preventing it from sitting nice and flat you can see in there there is actually quite a swing see what our scope is doing here now the only thing is we can't determine by this uh, if it's the coil or the magnet moving back and forth that's the only problem so just out of curiosity I just want to see what this thing actually draws as far as uh, power goes so we're just going to put a 1 ohm resistor in series with the uh, the photo cell that'll give us a good idea of what this thing is actually drawing power wise one ohm resistor is in place it's in 
series with the positive coming off of this uh, solar cell here. We got the lights on, uh, so we have we should have about a thousand lux right now. The little guy is dancing, and he's been dancing for a while, so he's stabilized. And we can see the voltage we're reading here. So we got about uh, 86 microamps on there. Now I'm just going to cover this guy with my hand. Okay, so he's he hasn't quite stopped. He's stopping. There, he's stopping now. And you can see our our current is basically nothing. There's probably just a little bit of uh, light leakage there. And then I'm going to remove my hand from the thing. And then we can see it goes up to about, uh, let's say, 0.12 milliamps. And then it sticks around 0.1 milliamp or 100 microamps. And then stabilizes at around 85 or so. Now this is in volts DC because we're meeting across that 1 ohm resistor. But nice thing about the 1 ohm resistor is the math works out that... Uh, voltage and current across there is the same. Well it just goes to show that if you mass produce something you can actually get a pretty impressive circuit sold on the retail shelves for like around a dollar. Pretty impressive. For more information go to hackedgadgets dot com